Many thanks to an anonymous viewer who liked the previous video on becoming a great programmer and asked me this interesting follow-up question. Would you consider the process of becoming a great programmer identical to that of becoming a great computer scientist? If they are different, how would you differentiate between a great programmer and a great computer scientist? Welcome to Frank Stajano Explains. I am a full professor in the Department of Computer Science and Technology of the University of Cambridge, and I run this channel as a public service to inspire and mentor enterprising computer scientists. All my university lectures in computer science are available here too. And if you find this content engaging and you want me to continue making more videos like this, please hit the like button and subscribe. It costs nothing to you and it really helps the channel becoming more visible and helping out other people like you. Now you asked, if they are different, how would I differentiate between a great programmer and a great computer scientist? Excellent question. And yes, I do think the two are different, although they are very strongly related. The short answer is that the great programmer is a specialist about one skill, namely the art of telling the machine what to do and make it do what you want. Or in other words, designing and building and debugging software that solves problems. Whereas the great computer scientist can do something more general and possibly more far-reaching, things that you could not achieve by programming alone. The computer scientist has a broader perspective, a broader skill set and a broader know-how. On the other hand, at least in my own personal view, the truly great computer scientists must also be great programmers to begin with. Those who just you know, hand wave about the programming part, I consider somewhat lacking as proper computer scientists. Take, for example, the list of people who received the Turing Award, which is more or less the equivalent of the Nobel Prize for computer science. Of course, anyone who gets a Turing Award is by definition one of the greatest computer scientists in the world. Quite a few of these people were also great programmers, but not all. For some of them, it's not their programming prowess that got them the Turing Award, it's because they were instrumental in the creation of something great in the field of computing. For example, reduced instruction set computers, or public key cryptography, or TCP IP, or the World Wide Web, or relational databases, or any of a number of fundamental computer technologies we take for granted today. You could be the greatest programmer in the world, but that's not going to be enough to produce this kind of breakthroughs. So there is more to being a great computer scientist than just being a fabulous programmer. On the other hand, quite a few of the Turing Award laureates were unquestionably also great programmers. Some Turing Award laureates even designed highly influential programming languages, including Lisp, Algol, Fortran, APL, C, Pascal, ML, Simula, Smalltalk, and so forth. These languages broke new ground and also inspired others to design other languages that became more popular, including the ones you may be familiar with nowadays, such as you know, Python, Java, and C++. Some other Turing Award winners didn't design a language, but wrote innovative and highly significant programs that left a big mark on the computing world and have been used by millions of people. You'll notice that the architects and developers of the Unix operating system, of the tech typesetting system, and of the LaTeX structured document preparation system that's based on it, all obviously great programmers, all received Turing Awards, though perhaps also for other merits besides having built those programs. So my answer embodies my belief that programming is the indispensable and essential hardcore of computer science, but also that there is a lot more to computer science than just programming competence. If you want to become a great computer scientist, you need, first of all, to understand what a great computer scientist is, and then find yourself some great role models and mentors. Let's break it down. Great computer scientist. Literally, a scientist is someone who does science. And science is the process of systematizing knowledge on the basis of objective and repeatable observations, as pioneered by the 16th century Italian astronomer and physicist Galileo Galilei, who has been called the father of the modern experimental scientific method. But when we talk about Galileo, we talk about natural science, stuff that already exists in the physical world, and that we humans are trying to figure out an explanation for, that, an explanation that will allow us to you know, discover laws, and with these laws, predict how things will work next. Okay, that's, you know, physics descriptive. Okay, when we talk about computer science instead, we must broaden this definition of science, because we are not observing stuff that exists in nature, but we rather we are studying computers and things that computers can do. And computers are machines built from the ground up by us humans. There are still laws that govern and limit what they can do, of course, and some smart computer scientists figure out those laws, such as Amdahl's law that explains how much of a speed up you may gain at most by improving the performance of a subsystem of a computer. Uh, look it up if you've never heard about it. It may sound obvious in retrospect, but it, it's actually a pretty clever insight. I used to teach that when I taught computer architecture. But some other part of computer science is not about discovering laws, but about inventing new stuff. 
inventing you know, a new computer language that introduces a new programming paradigm, say object-oriented programming, that allows us to do things we couldn't do before. Some of computer science is building systems, like building the internet. Uh, you know, you have to be a designer, you have to be an architect, an engineer, a mathematician, all of these at the same time. Basically, someone who makes and builds stuff and makes it work, as opposed to someone who just you know, thinks about stuff. So you'll have to lean a bit more towards the engineer if you're building things than the pure mathematician or the descriptive physicist. And this too is part of being a scientist in this extended sense. Computer science is a very practical subject rooted in building things. So let me tell you a small anecdote involving one of the great mentors I had the good fortune of learning from in my career, Sir Andy Hopper. He was my first employer when I originally came to Cambridge for a software engineering job in an industrial research lab, Oligretti Research Limited, of which he was the managing director. His career spanned both industry and academia. He started a dozen high-tech companies, including some that went on to billion dollar valuations. And I learned from him some of the most important lessons of my career. Anyway. Sir Andy also served as the head of our department for 15 years, and at some point he felt we needed to change the name of our university department at Cambridge, originally founded as the Mathematical Laboratory in 1937, and then called the Computer Laboratory for most of its existence, a name that external people routinely misunderstood to mean something else. Okay, but, so Sir Andy felt we needed to change, but did not want us to be called just Department of Computer Science, which would have been the default option, the thing that everybody else uh, uses. But he didn't want that because this might suggest an image of, you know, a nest of grey-bearded ivory tower theoreticians proving abstruse theorems on some blackboard. And he was keen to emphasize that our world-leading computing work is eminently practical. So he called us Department of Computer Science and Technology, to be read as computer science, the theoretical stuff, and computer technology, the practical stuff two equally important and necessary wheels of a cart. And indeed, Andy's official academic title is Professor of Computer Technology, which was also originally the title of his and my mentor and academic ancestor, Sir Maurice Wilkes, second ever Turing Award laureate who built the EDSAC, the first store program computer in the world. Sir Maurice was clearly a designer and a builder, as well as a world-class scientist. So, a great computer scientist is one who adds some significant pieces to this growing body of science that explains all that humanity knows about computers. And each of these pieces could be descriptive and theoretical about the, you know, the laws that govern how computers work, computational complexity and all that kind of stuff, or it could be constructive and engineering-like, like inventing and building a new kind of computer processor that makes buffer overflows impossible, which is what my brilliant computer security colleague, Professor Robert Watson, has been doing for the past decade with his CHERRY project that has attracted hundreds of millions of funding from government and industry, has gained traction with all the major hardware and software vendors, and is set to revolutionize computer security as he moves out from the lab into the real world. How do you become a great computer scientist? The training to become a scientist, this kind of scientist, is the PhD. You get a PhD in computer science in exchange for contributing a new piece of science that didn't exist before. It can be small, but it must be something that's sufficiently useful and non-obvious that if anyone later writes a textbook about that area, they'll have to mention your bit. And that's your entrance ticket for being considered a peer in the worldwide scientific stage about our discipline. Once you have the PhD, you are basically one of us. You've proved your worth by adding a tiny piece to this great puzzle we are all building. And um, that's it. All people with PhDs are in. Okay. Now, as for becoming a truly great computer scientist, you know, the PhD is just the, the, the first step on a long ladder. And you have to continue to build and contribute some significant new pieces to the collective scientific body of knowledge. So you discover or you invent or you build something new and useful, something that solves an important problem we didn't previously know how to solve, and you explain how you did it in a way that other people can replicate, and you publish that openly, and your worldwide peers, the other people with a PhD in the discipline, will review your publication with skepticism, they'll try to poke holes in it, and if it still stands up, then it is accepted by being published as a peer-reviewed contribution in a reputable conference or journal, and by repeating this process, we collectively advance the boundaries of our science bit by bit and this is an ongoing process that never stops so the phd is the entrance ticket for becoming a professional research scientist you should get a phd if your career ambition is to be a researcher for the rest of your life whether in industry or in academia and in academia after being a junior researcher for a while you can then get on the so-called tenure track uh, and become an assistant professor, provided your contributions are recognized at least at the national level. And you may then progress to an associate professor once your work becomes well known at international level. And 
it may take some 20 years altogether but if you are brilliant and ambitious and persistent and patient then you might finally make it to full professor once you are recognized by your peers as one of the world leaders in your field and this assessment is done by sending a polite and discreet letter to the most eminent figures in your field and asking them have you ever heard of dr x how would you rate the significance of dr x's contributions do you think dr x is a world leader in in, in their subfield and you get promoted to full professor on the basis of these independent opinions they are not the only metric but they are one of the most significant inputs that the promotion panel takes into consideration and this digression about you know my world of academic grades is not to imply that I think that the greatest computer scientists are necessarily academics. As we have seen before, people like uh, Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie, who built Unix, were great architects, great designers, great programmers, but they spent most of their time doing stuff, not documenting what they did by writing it up in papers for the scientific record. But they still count as both great programmers and great computer scientists, and they are absolute heroes in my book. In fact, there are plenty of people with Turing Awards who are not academics. And that's a good thing, in my opinion. Otherwise, this recognition would be too self-referential. Anyway, to recap, how do you become a great computer scientist? You must become a computer scientist and you must become great. For the computer scientist part, go to school. You know, the computer part is your undergraduate course. And the scientist part, you know, you're trained to be a scientist with the PhD. And then you want to become great. And of course, you should do that in parallel. You can't first become a rubbish computer scientist and then become great later. So you, you should be aiming to become great as you go along. Okay. And for becoming great, learn from the best, as I told you. Make an investment in yourself and move, relocate to where the best people are. There are several places like that around the world. And that's, that's a good reason for coming to Cambridge, by the way. I originally came to Cambridge not to do a degree at the university, but to work in Andy Hopper's lab, Olivetti Research Limited, because it was full of really clever people pushing the boundaries of what could be done. I had interviewed in various places. That's the place I love the best, and that's why I came here. And be worthy of being there, because, of course, if it's a place full of great people, then it would be a crowded place, and there would be many more people who want to be in there than there is space for them. So you'll have to earn your place there. But if you have the talent and you have the drive, and you're willing to put in the effort and the long hours for however many years it takes, then just go for it. Find yourself some role models you admire, understand what made them great, and figure out what you can do that would make you as great as them. And more than just role models who, you know, a role model could be a unidirectional relationship where, you know, you admire someone but they don't even know that you exist, then you should instead engage with your role models and do what it takes for them to agree to become your mentors, whereas a mentor is someone who actually knows about you, cares about you, and helps you grow. And then just do it and never give up. I have plenty of wonderful things I could tell you about the great mentors I've had the good fortune to learn from. Uh, Sir Andy, of course, Sir Morris, uh, my PhD supervisor, Ross Anderson, as well as you know, my kendo masters, Nanganuma Sensei and Toyomura Sensei, and also my beloved teachers from when I was an undergraduate or even before that when I was a schoolboy, to all of whom I'm eternally grateful, but I don't want this video to become too long. I think probably already is a bit too long. Anyway, so let's wrap this up. If your contribution is really significant and it positively impacts lots of people, then you might one day get the coveted Turing Award. And I really hope you do, but realistically speaking, only a couple of those are awarded per year, so most of us will never get a Turing Award. And that's okay. Always aim high and learn from the best, but of course you can still be great computer scientist even if you never get a Turing award so relax okay just build something that is useful to other people have fun doing it and you'll be happy best wishes if you have any more questions for me about computing learning and any of the other topics that we deal with on this channel then stick them in the comments below I still read all the comments and I reply to most of them thank you very much for watching until the end which you can prove to me by saying chocolate bar in the comments and I hope you have a fantastic career in computing which is a super exciting field